Never underestimate a good sea shanty. I once ended a war by standing in the middle of a battlefield singing the Wellerman at the top of me lungs. Of course, the princesses were so pleased on both sides that we, uh, well, that's a story for another time. For I am the sea shanty singing sword swinging pirate bard, and this video be about me. We are D&D Daily, and if you want to play the sea shanty singing sword swinging pirate bard, forever known as the pirate bard now, then pick the valor bard with the pirate background. Make sure you also have some stories prepared before each session. You're going to need them to tell your fantastic stories. And if you need inspiration for these stories, I would take a look at the Fisher and the Smuggler backgrounds. They both have tables of fantastic stories, which you can steal all of those from. And make sure to embellish them and add your own flavor to them. The Pirate Bard was born into a perfectly stable home. It was a great situation that he found dreadfully boring. So he decided to leave said situation to go find some high adventure. The high adventure actually ended up finding him while he was working on a cargo ship. Pirates pulled up and overtook the ship. The pirates gave a challenge to every single one of the passengers saying, give us a good reason we shouldn't split you ear from ear. Only the pirate bard succeeded in this challenge and he did so by singing a lovely sea shanty followed by some impressive boasting. The pirate crew spared his life on the condition that he joined them and joined them he did. He found his place supporting the crew with music, magic, and occasionally by whipping out his rapier to fight. He also had a knack for getting the enemies to surrender without a fight. The pirate bard is not one to stand still and he is always looking for the next adventure. Lately he's been feeling a lot like, maybe I don't want to be a crewman forever, I think I want to see what it's like to be a captain. So on the most recent visit to the port, he stowed away off to find his own crew and ship. The pirate bard is a boisterous braggart. He is loud, and he likes to talk himself up, and his stories play into that every time he tells them. It's always somehow wraps back to him being wonderful. He's also very adventurous. He's not one to stand still. He's not one to hold still. He's not one to wait for adventure to come to him. He's going to go find it. If things are getting boring, he is going to go make things happen. He is also a natural-born scoundrel. He likes his money. He likes his women. He likes his alcohol, and he likes to get those things for free. And as you've probably guessed, he is a storyteller. He loves to tell his stories, he loves to make them bigger and grander than they probably were, and he, he has a signature catchphrase that goes along with his stories, which is, oh well, that's a story for another time. Always trying to keep them on the hook for his next story. In combat, you are a spellcaster first, but you can do some damage with your rapier and shield if you need to. Make sure you focus on debuffs and party buffs, and don't forget to throw in some choice insults at your enemies using Vicious Mockery. You can also focus on support spells. Uh, one that stands out to me is Enhance Ability. You also have the ability to give your teammates combat inspiration, which is normal bardic inspiration, in the addition of giving them the ability to add their inspiration to either their damage or their AC for one attack. Out of combat, you are a support caster. You also use illusions heavily. On the open sea, a group of ghost ships would convince most people to surrender without a fight. Likewise, a sea monster might do the same thing, and you might even just do fog cover so you guys can sneak up on an unsuspecting ship. Something I would encourage you to do while playing the sea shanty singing sword swinging pirate bard is to always tie your spells to stories. So if you take major illusion, come up with a story where you used Major Illusion super cleverly, even if you just got the spell. For example, There was this one time where a royal fleet was telling on us and gaining. Using my massive wit, I summoned an illusion of a fleet of ghost ships. Scared the whole lot of them away. Of course, the captain's daughter was so pleased at this heroism that she took me... Well, that's a story for another time. All your illusion spells will totally work with this. You have your major illusion, you have your hallucinatory terrain, you have your minor image. But I would say put those to great use because I think on the open sea those are even stronger. As a bard, you are also really good at just skills in general. You get that half proficiency to all skills, so that means you can join the party in on most most endeavors. If it's sneaky, you have a bit of sneak. If it's you know athletics, you have a bit of athletics. So you're really well-rounded and can join the party in most things they're attempting to do. During the Pirate Bard's downtime, your primary goal is to get a crew and a nice ship. 
To that end, you would foster your reputation as a dread pirate. You would spread tales of your greatness and how how fearsome you are, so young wide-eyed crew members who want to join this fearsome crew will be more malleable to your suggestions. You are a storyteller. You can boost your party's reputation by spreading stories and songs of their glory. Mostly your glory, but some of their glory. And feel free to embellish this however you see fit. You also have the bad reputation background feature from being a pirate, and that lets you get away with some petty crimes because people are too scared to give you away to the uh, authorities. So feel free to do a little light thievery or light intimidation and, and lean on your bad reputation to get away with it. You are also really big into fostering your own reputation. You would focus on, no one messes with me because I'm so grand, with the hopes that you'll inspire young crewmen to join who don't want to be messed with. While you're at it, you might as well recruit your party to your crew too. The more the merrier. And of course, during your downtime, you're also going to be singing excellent sea shanties and telling wonderful stories. While playing the Pirate Bard, it's important to have a good dex, at least a plus two. This maximizes your AC, and with the, with the Valor Bard's ability to also have a shield, you can actually come up with a pretty decent AC. Despite needing a decent dex, Charisma is still your primary um, stat that you want to boost, with Constitution kind of being your, your third stat that you want to get good. Don't forget you are primarily a spellcaster who can sometimes poke people with a sword, not the other way around. Some other spells that I think the Pirate Bard would enjoy using would be Skyrite. You could, in the clouds, create your pirate flag as you're pulling up on them and, and create this, uh, this fear around the pirate flag coming up in the sky. You could also take Knock. I think Knock fits him really well where it's like, yeah, I'm breaking and entering and I don't care who hears. The, the last honorable mention I'm going to say is the enlarge and reduce because you could enlarge your ship or reduce it and just get into all sorts of shenanigans with that or reduce their ship and now they're all falling in the water. Have fun with it. Ultimately, you are a really flexible character. You can really play this however you like. Now let's talk about the pirate bard's weaknesses. Despite your extra armor, you're not a fighter. You're not a marshal. You're a spellcaster. You are still squishy. You still want to play safe, you still want to mind your positioning. You're more of a medium ranged character overall, but you can hold your own for a round or two in melee. Your real weakness is when it starts getting to really long ranges. While using the Pirate Bard as an NPC, he is definitely going to be on the chaotic spectrum. He would likely bring comedy relief with his overly embellished stories. Uh, I could see him definitely being the captain of a ship that the party chartered when they need to travel. You would both bring fun and, and a lightheartedness to that travel session. You would also definitely choose someone in the party to flirt heavily with. Maybe he gets some. <laughs> if I were to be playing the Pirate Bard as an antagonist, he wouldn't be so much as evil as a scoundrel. He's more likely to fool and double-cross the party and rob them than he is to try and kill them. How would you use the Pirate Bard in one of your games? What would you do to make them better? You can also tell us what you thought of this video by giving us either a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Either way, way it helps us know what you're looking for. And on the next episode of D&D Flavor Builds, we're going to be talking about the Pseudo Giant, a Goliath aspiring to be a Frost Giant. Hit the subscribe button because you're not going to want to miss it. Later!